установите контрольную с вантилей. А, ah, the wax slug. It's cheap, it's easy to make, and often during uh, shortages, target loads are the only thing you can find on the shelves. Wax slugs have pretty poor aerodynamics. They usually tumble through the air, but up to, you know, moderate ranges of maybe 20 or 30 yards, they're quite effective and do an excellent job of making very large holes in targets. Robert from Vet Pilot Ballistics thinks he has the solution to make the wax slug more stable, more accurate, and give it longer range. It's actually really similar to the Gwalandi Guabo Steel Slug. In fact, Robert's design actually uses the Gwalandi LBC Cushion Wad. Now the idea is the wax slug stays inside that wad and the wad acts as a stabilizer, keeping it flying straight like an arrow through the air. In an effort to make these more aerodynamic, Robert added a plastic cap, but half the samples also are just flat on top with that pink overshot card on there. Well, let's get out there and test these out and see if all these little details will make a difference in their performance. We're 15 yards, right? Yeah. Well, you were right. And I was wrong. I'm always. Why am I always you're the guy that's you're wrong? Always, you're always wrong, Jeff. I know. Jeff, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's that's not bad though. It. Uh. It, but look at all the shot all over the place. Yeah, it broke up in flight, but majority of it. Yeah. Look at the bend on that. I don't think you could bend that if you hit it with a sledgehammer in a vise. Maybe, maybe you could, but... You might, but that's a... That's a lot of force. It's a heck of a lot faster. Yeah. <laughs> in test number one, using a smooth bore, well, the slug broke apart. Only about half of that one and eighth ounce of load actually hit the plate. Now, had the entire thing stayed together and flew straight, it probably would have punched right through it. But we had so many things going wrong here, even the back end of the wad was ripped apart. But maybe this was just a defective one. Let's continue on with the test. Okay, we have the five terabyte hard drive. And Danny's gonna aim right at the center of the spindle there. This one is, it has the little pinkish overshot card thing on it. Pink top with an S mark on it. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means. It's a lot easier when people send us all identical stuff. Okay, I'm ready. Wow, that thing just went flying. A little bit high lift. Yeah. But there again, that one came apart. We got pellet marks all over down here. It's hard to tell what it was doing. We'll have to see on the slow-mo. Yeah, did not go all the way. Look at all those platters, though. That's a lot of platters. <laughs> That's a lot of platters. <laughs> That's a lot of damage. There's the damage. Okay. Well, you wanted, wanted to test it on a hard drive, so we did that. Well, it looks like we had about the same exact results as test number one. The thing broke apart. Not much of the slug actually impacted the hard drive. And thank you, Ray K, for donating that hard drive, by the way. In all our past testing using the plain old ugly, simple wax slugs, we never really saw them break apart like that. And they were accurate enough to hit an object like that at 15 yards with no problem at all. Next, we'll see if using a rifle choke will help these things out. $1,499 on that one. So go. he said they're going to be $1,400 and he's pretty close. So are we going to blame Danny for the accuracy or the slugs? I don't know. California, everything seems to be going to the left here. And low. <laughs> yeah, it's a 10 millimeter. Fiberglass panel, at the Hong Kong body armor. That thing had no problem stopping a 38 Special, for example. Anything above that, not really. Wow, that, that is a lot of damage there. How, how big is that hole? <laughs> that's like thumb size, man. Uh, it's probably, that's a good inch. Yeah, 
That's the thing about the wax slug is they just I, spread the energy out. I haven't measured my thumb. <laughs> okay. It's, I know what it that seemed, It seemed we don't have any trace of the shot impact in it, so no. that one must have stayed together. I don't see any. Well, finally, we have one that stayed together. It just wasn't very accurate. It's about two inches off. Now, it's a little early to say the rifle choke helped it with its stability, but we'll keep on testing and see if that's the case. Danny remembered to bring out the wet magazines today. That's a great target. Okay, again through rifle choke, and that's a pink top one? That's a pink top. 1456. It looked like it was a little bit off. Again. Left at high this time. It's that California windage. <laughs> all right. 15 it yards, right? Did not get all the way through. Yes, 15 yards. A lot of energy dumped there as we expected. No bowls, so let's dissect this real quick and see what we got. Now we can tell that this one was probably flying straight. It uh, went in about three inches into the wet magazines before it came to a stop. And that's pretty decent penetration for a frangible slug. Now once again, this was shot through a rifle choke, giving it a little bit of a spin. This one was flying nice and straight. That one worked well. So if a rifle choke with a 1 in 34 twist is good, how about full rifling with 1 in 27 twist? Full rifling this time, ladies and gentlemen. Full rifling! In this, right in the center there of the label. He, oh, okay. I will go for it. Okay. He made his call, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the best is just sitting right there. <laughs> What's holding it up? Hurt. Okay. Now, if we didn't have the high-speed camera, that would look like a fantastic shot, right? Uh, I would have been happy with it, but... Uh, but after this, we'll, we'll show you the high-speed footage. It, it was incredibly accurate at 25 yards, right? But... I hit the label. Most of it. You hit the little cross thing, right? But look at this. Oh, yeah. Everything was falling apart. Everywhere. Yeah. Look inside. Yeah, let's see here. Pellets everywhere. But yeah, it's a mess. You kind of tell that maybe it hit sideways. So if a little rifling was good with the rifle choke, then full rifling ought to be better, right? Not necessarily. Now think how fast that thing was spinning, traveling at 1400 feet per second. The centrifugal force, well, yeah, it was just too much for it. But hey, it was accurate. Okay, now let's see what happens out of a cylinder bore. Go back to the cylinder bore and see how the cylinder bore performs at 25 yards. Aiming at the red X above the white label this time. No, no fancy optics on this, just a bead sight, but Danny's pretty good. And if Danny's off, then it's probably not his fault. Okay, I'm ready. Wow. Now, if you remember the other test that we did with the cylinder bore or smooth bore, with no spin at all, the thing broke apart and was a failure. But this time, it flew pretty stable. We had just that little supersonic bob going on there, which is normal for long projectiles like that. Let's see if the rifle choke is, uh, we'll make it uh, more magical. Okay, I'm ready. Yikes. And even stranger, we had pretty good results using the rifle choke in the previous test, but this time it was just out of control. And this time it was just way worse than even using full rifling. Very strange. Okay, 50 yard accuracy test, three shot group. Uh, first one is using the Benelli with the rifle choke. Um, Aiming at the white plate. Uh, pink overshot card. Pink overshot, okay. 
Okay, I'm ready whenever you are. All Danny's right, going to take three shots quickly, but precisely, right? Right. Okay, I'm ready. Right. <laughs> Get some. You know, from back there, I didn't think we hit the plate at all. I didn't either. And uh, third shot, I know went over the top. Yeah. But once we walked up here, just two right there and there. That's pretty good. That third one was a fly. It was yeah. more than a flyer, let's say. <laughs> that, was, that was a different tumbler. Yeah. Uh, now, it appears that the first two were the pink top one. This one, the third shot, was a white top and that's the one that failed so the little ballistic cap on there eh, doesn't really help uh, cylinder bore this time bead sights once again and these are the pink ones again yes okay try to keep them consistent as we can Super low or something? Now my high speed camera only records for a couple seconds so I had to kind of select which shot I was going to record. This one, shot number two, with no spin at all, uh, very unstable and very inaccurate. These are the white tops? White tops. Okay. Let's see if those make any difference. I'm ready. There we go. They don't like rifling. Yeah, they really don't. Yeah. Point of aim. One, two, and I think... <laughs> two finger job. <laughs> Again, shot number two is recorded here. We could see that this one just disintegrated, just puked all its guts out about midway there. And the only thing that actually hit the hood was the plastic wad. All right, I, I happen to have a one of my home brewed wax slugs with us. Nothing fancy about it. Crayon wax, 25 cents. Let's see how it does through the rifle choke. Here we go. That That's a, it looked like a 20 millimeter cannon hit that thing. Uh, it uh, didn't do the backside any good either. Yeah, you know, may as well show the backside. Let me see this. Let me just spin it around so we get. Oh, the backside of the of the hood. Okay. Yeah. I'm spinning around. <laughs> just throw it on the ground. Flip it over on the ground, and it'll be all lit up. There you go. The hood. Oh. The hood. The bonnet. Just throw it down on the ground. Man. Yeah. Peace on earth. But uh, yeah, tremendous damage, like a like a flak cannon hit it or something. You gotta be careful with that thing because those, those are sharp as heck. But there you go. Um, I've always said that the wax lug is great for defensive distances, maybe up to 20 yards or something. 20, 30 max. Yeah. But uh, I was hoping, I was really hoping these arrow slugs would. Uh, would would better that, but didn't really see that. Yeah. It was a good try, you know, but you know, it, it, you can't beat the wax slug as as cheapness and ease to make. Yeah. Absolutely easy to make, quick. Old, old crayons, old candles. Yeah, heat it heat it all up together, heat it up with a shot, pour it in the shell, let it cool off, and it's good. Cheap old federal bird shot. Yeah, yeah. Now Danny wanted to replicate the accurate shot on the plate with the arrow slug using the rifle choke. And it was accurate, but it broke apart and only a piece of it actually hit it.
and then we tested just the plain old ugly wax slug through the rifle choke. Definitely not the best stability we've ever seen, but accurate enough. More accurate than I expected at 50 yards, in fact. I guess I'm just a keep it simple, keep it cheap, keep it quick kind of guy. Now in case you have no idea what a rifle choke is, or maybe you do know what it is and think it's a gimmick, just by chance, uh, Buffalo Outdoors uploaded this video where he shot uh, rifled slugs through a rifle choke, and he wanted to prove whether or not a rifle choke would improve the accuracy of a rifled slug or a foster slug. So definitely check that out. It's a very surprising video. I think you'll enjoy it. Subscribe to Buffalo. It's a channel that Danny, Greg, and myself enjoy watching.